going to push that over to them and say, you take care of the economy while I get to go do the things I want to do, like Obamacare and Dodd-Frank and cap-and-trade and card check. What was that? All right, yeah, that's wrong. Okay. Uh, what, what I'm going to do is focus my attention on getting Americans back to work. That's going to be job one. And then let me tell you how some of the things I'm going to do to do that. And there's a long list of what has to be done to make an economy strong. If there were only one button you had to press to put everyone to work with good jobs and rising incomes, why, anybody would have figured out how to press it. But there are a lot of things you have to do to get the economy strong. Let me tell you three I'd do right, right away. Number one, I would take advantage of our energy resources, our coal, our gas, our oil. And if I have to build it myself, I'm going to get that pipeline down here from Canada to get oil here. We, we, there's been just an extraordinary blessing for this country. The, the energy resources we have here. We're an energy-rich nation. Someone learned how to do something unusual. We don't just drill into the earth by going vertically and tapping into a pocket of oil or gas today. We go vertically and then horizontally. And we can tap into all sorts of pockets along the way. And then by forcing in liquid, we can force the gas and the oil out. And so we have now 100 years of natural gas supply and low prices. I want to take advantage of that. Why? Because I know if we do take advantage of our energy resources, we're going to have manufacturers like this grow and others come back to America because manufacturing uses energy and homes use energy. I saw an article the other day in the Washington Post, and they said that this is by a guy named David Ignatius. The study they were citing said that America could be the number one energy producing nation in the world within 10 years. I want that energy here because I want those jobs here. We're going to bring employment back up in America thanks to energy. Now there's, there's something else I'm going to do, and that is I'm going to get rid of this huge overhang. There's this, this cloud that's hanging over small business today. You go ask a small business person about why they're uncomfortable hiring more people right now, and, uh, and they'll say, well, they'll, they'll talk about one piece of legislation that gives them real heartburn. They just don't know what's coming. They don't, someone said, you know, we won't know what it's going to do until we've actually uh, passed it, all right? Remember that line by Nancy Pelosi? I'm going to do something to give us a big dose of certainty. I will repeal Obamacare. We're going to get that done from the very beginning. And then there's something else. When, when people think about taking their life savings and investing to start a small business, or when perhaps some big foreign corporation wants to build a big factory here, one of the things they think about is whether America is going to hit a grease-like wall down the road. Because the path we're on, spending a trillion dollars more every year than we take in, is leading us to Greece. I want to make sure no one ever wonders about that, that they understand the dollar will be worth something down the road and that we will have a strong and stable foundation fiscally. And so to do that, I'm going to finally get America on track to have a balanced budget, just like your governor's done here. Look, this counts. This makes a difference. This makes a difference in the lives of our citizens that are without work or that are underemployed. A lot of people having hard times these days. I mean, I go back to what the president said. Do you see that? That was water dropping down from the ceiling. Do you see that? It's so hot on here, the building is sweating. But I, look, there, there, are, there are people around this country having hard times. But some of the folks I spoke with this morning described the fact that they're working, but working at jobs, we, we talked about, I won't tell you just who it was, but someone mentioned that, that their spouse had been working in our military for almost 40 years, worked in our military, worked his way up, doing very well comes back to go to work in the workforce and is now only able to work in a, in a job that requires heavy lifting, literally heavy lifting, making $8.50 an hour, uh, way, uh, a huge reduction in compensation for their family, both the mom and the dad in that circumstance. Look, people are having a hard time. Those unemployment numbers understate the difficulty happening in this country. I wish the president would get out, talk to people. He'd, he'd understand just how out of touch he was when he said the private sector is doing fine. It is not. It needs help, and I'm going to get it for it. And I... <laughs> and
And so, and so what I'm talking about doing is, is getting help for the people who need it most right now in this country. But it's also getting help for the next generation, for our kids. They deserve to know that the future is bright. You deserve to know that your kids will enjoy a better future even than we've enjoyed. And that's got to happen again in America. And there's something else I'd mention, and that's just the whole cause of liberty and freedom. Because America's strength is so essential to that. I, I was in Great Britain a number of months ago and, and got the chance to meet Tony Blair and David Cameron and other leaders of Great Britain. And, and one of them said to me, he said, Mitt, if you're lucky enough to be elected president of the United States, you will have the chance to visit other countries, go to their capitals, and you will undoubtedly have rehearsed for you all the mistakes they think America's making. And he said, but as you hear that, don't ever forget this, please. The one thing we all fear the most is a weak America. American strength, military strength, economic strength, strength in our homes. American strength is the best ally peace has ever known. The world counts on a strong America. I was actually in uh, San Diego on Memorial Day, speaking about our military strength, and saw a number of the veterans of various wars, and also saw a number of the members of our armed forces today. It's, a, as you may know, a Navy base, Marine base there as well in, in uh, San Diego, and I got the chance to introduce some of the veterans. One of the people I introduced was a man who uh, was the lookout on the USS Tennessee on the day of the attack at Pearl Harbor. He said he was on that lookout post. He saw the pilot coming in. His eyes locked on the eyes of the pilot of one of those aircraft coming in and dropping armament on our ships that would take so many lives. He was injured in the attack, but went on to serve for 33 years in the U.S. Navy. And I had him stand, and he was recognized. But, you know, there are not as many uh, World War II veterans around as there used to be. And, uh, and they can't stand quite as tall and straight as they used to the torch that they've been holding for the world and for us, they can't hold quite as high. It's our turn to seize that torch. It's a torch of freedom, liberty, of opportunity, and hope. It's not America's torch, but it's America's duty and honor to hold that torch for the world. This is a critical time for America, our ability to hold that torch high and to have it lit brightly so the world can see it and aspire for the freedoms we enjoy depends on strength here at home, in our homes, in our economy, and in turn in our military. I'm going to get America stronger again with great jobs. I'm going to do that by balancing our budget, getting rid of Obamacare, making sure we open up new markets for American goods, getting our energy policies to work for us, not just for other folks who get hundreds of billions of dollars for us. I'm going to make sure there's a level playing field between labor and management. We're going to have good schools again. Our schools are falling behind. It's inexcusable. I want to train our workers for the jobs of today and tomorrow. We've got to get America working again. The world depends on us. The people of America struggling today depend on us, and our kids are hoping that we'll do it. We will do it. It's going to happen in Wisconsin. You're going to be the, vo the deciding voice. Help me win the presidency and keep America the shining city on a hill. Thank you so much. You're the best. Thank you.